okay, we all know about parent burnout, right? Being burnt out as a parent means you are cranky, you are snappy, you are not loving life, you are probably really, um, you know, stressed with your kids, and maybe if you have a partner, stress with them, you're not um, in that place of flow where you're finding joy and connecting with those around you. Parent burnout is such a real thing, and I know it can happen to anyone, right? Doesn't matter where you are in the world or what you do for work, parent burnout is such a common thing. So I'm gonna be talking about it today with kind of the like undertone of emotional intelligence. You guys know that's the stuff I love, that's the stuff I talk about, I write about, I speak about. So I am so lucky in a way to have found and, and dived into emotional intelligence because that I honestly believe has probably helped me like um, avoid burnout so many times because you know we all get to that place where we are we feel spent we're exhausted you know we've given all we can and our kids still ask for more and and it can kind of ebb and flow I think you know sometimes with our work or you know with a partner or a marriage that stuff it, it all kind of compounds so anyway I have put together 10 different um, I want to say tips or ways in which you can reduce the likelihood of you burning out as a parent um, this goes for mums and dads it doesn't matter who you are um, a lot of the people I know are watching who are watching are mums um, but that's okay if you are a dad and you're watching along and you are not enjoying being a parent or your kids are stressing you out whatever it is this stuff is going to help you emotional intelligence is across the board for anyone any age any gender anywhere right so I'm going to tell you 10 ways 10 considerations doesn't mean you have to do all of them no because then you probably would burn out trying to tick all these boxes so it's not about that I want you to maybe take like one or two and think how can I do this in like the next week or the next month how can I just focus on this one thing okay don't overload yourself if you're close to burnout or if you're burnt out and that's why you're watching this video welcome but I want to just do something that's going to help you right and kind of help you on your journey because if you have one child or 10 children, you're, you're um, at risk of burning out in this day and age, like in our culture, I think. So thank goodness for emotional intelligence. So number one is we really need to learn to recognize and validate our own emotions. I could go on and on about how we do not recognize and we have no awareness of our emotions most of the time because we're too busy and we don't have time and it's awkward and emotions of kids or babies like and and we're not it's not valued in our culture and we weren't most of us were not raised to validate um, and have an awareness of or an appreciation of our emotions I'm not gonna waffle on cuz <laughs> this would be a two minute a two hour video <laughs> but that's my first point I want you to um, if, if this is gonna be your one takeaway how can I be more aware of my emotions does that mean I need to follow more people online who talk about emotions, emotional intelligence, psychology? Like that's the stuff I love. I've, I unfollowed all the crap that I used to follow and I'm very intentional with my social media because I know that if I am scrolling, at least I'm scrolling on some good stuff. Anyway, so start being more um, aware and appreciative of your emotions in the moment so that you can feel when your emotions or your mood is building um, before you get to that stage where you're spiraling and validate your emotions is the second part of that so accept and validate where you're at even if it's in a yucky place and you're really angry or you're resentful or stressed whatever it is validate that parenting can be really tough so so I don't want you guys dismissing it or making light of it oh you know everyone has their problems no if you're stressed and you're burning out validate that for yourself that's a real thing so it's number one. Second one I hate that mindfulness has become a buzzword but my second point is around mindfulness because if we can stay present and mindful of our um, our feelings our stress our overwhelm and our anger without judgment then we're kind of creating that space for self-compassion which is kind of one of my next points <laughs> but we have to be mindful we have to be aware and take the time to notice how we're feeling so that was my second one I wrote notes because I don't want to forget. <laughs> Number three is develop some self-compassion. We are so hard on ourselves. We are not taught to value our emotions. We're not taught to, to put ourselves first and value ourselves. We're taught to put our kids first. And that's like um, revered and, and applauded and praised. But when we put ourselves last, guess what happens? 
everyone else gets what they need and then we suffer we we burn out we're no good to anyone so being um compassionate to yourself means showing yourself the same level of kindness and understanding and care and empathy that you would to a close friend it sounds really simple but we don't do it so maybe this is something that jumps out with you um i don't know if you already know and follow the amazing kristen neff n-e-double-f she's amazing around self-compassion does lots of research and has lots of resources and books and things like that so um highly recommend kristen neff's work for self self-compassion number four is around setting boundaries oh i just find that this is something coming up again and again and again for the parents i coach for the parents in my programs, for myself. <laughs> Learning to set boundaries is can be really, really hard. Again, we are not taught to do this. Maybe we even have learned along the way that people who set boundaries and say no to things are rude and disrespectful and selfish. It's not the case. Like, not if they're doing it, in, you know, if they're doing it in like a no, I don't care, like deal with it on your own. That's, that's not very respectful and kind. <laughs> but when we say, no, I, I love that you asked me or I'm glad that you um, want to do that or go there, but I can't, that's not for me or today or I'm too busy or maybe another time, maybe someone else can help you with that. When we say, when we learn to say no, it's because we are saying yes to something that is more important, right? It's like a balance. Setting boundaries is a balance. Setting boundaries means um, we are being realistic with our time and our energy we are prioritizing things that matter to us and to the people around us. And we're not just saying yes to everything because then we're going to get overwhelmed and overburdened and stressed and burnt out. So setting boundaries doesn't have to be huge and scary and hard and like you don't have to be rude about it. I'm giving myself this advice because I also struggle with boundaries. I'm a recovering people pleaser. So um, that is something that, you know, get a book about it, watch some YouTube videos about it. I have some blogs and articles on my website about boundaries. So there is lots and lots out there, right? There, there's lots of stuff and support out there. I coach parents on how to set boundaries around their own time and energy and for their kids, because we're teaching our kids how to set boundaries when we do it for ourselves. Anyway, a whole heap to it, but setting boundaries can help uh, reduce the likelihood of like tipping you over into that burnout when everything is awful and the world is a piece of crap and you're just ready to throw in the towel so number five is start bit by bit prioritizing self-care self-care it is again it's a bit of a buzzword but it is so important you have to tailor self-care to your needs whether it's taking breaks, whether it's um, finding a new hobby or an old one that you used to love doing in high school and you haven't done it since you were, you know, that old. Um, maybe it's just getting support from family and friends and, um, you know, asking for help and things like that. Self-care doesn't have to be, you know, that saying, it doesn't have to be like um, getting your nails done and bath, bubble baths and whatnot. It could be making, for me, sometimes it's making time in between calls and coaching and stuff to go out just like to the next suburb, grab a coffee, a really good, nice hot takeaway coffee from the shop I love, the cafe I love, and bring it back home. And I know that sounds like a waste of time, but it's my self-care. And sometimes I might be able to stay there for 20 minutes and read a book. So what does self-care look like to you? It's the whole put your own ox oxygen mask on first. Okay, if you don't fill your own cup, you are no good to anyone. You're cranky, you're snappy, you're rude, you're unhelpful. No, do it yourself. I don't have time. Do you think I look like I want to make you a sandwich? We, we have all been there. Hands up, we have all been there, right? So self-care is huge. Six is communicating effectively with those around you. You've got to be honest about your feelings and your needs. It's hard. It can be really icky. It can be really you know, challenging. Um, but the more like, again, I'm working on this one, the more that you can communicate and express how you're feeling, what's going on for you and where you need help or where it would be, um, really helpful for your partner or your kids to take the load off or do something or, or, you know, miss out on all those afternoon activities will miss out on what, you know, what, 
whenever you can do that, if you can communicate that to other people, most of the time they do want to help. Most of the time they're like, thanks, yeah, no, I could get that done or I'll find someone who can or I'm glad you told me. I'm glad you told me. But we don't tell people. We keep it in and we shove it down. So maybe that's something that um, can stands out to you that you can work on communicating. Um, it's not like saying, I'm burnt out. You never help. This is all your fault and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. Um, but it might be saying, you know what? I'm really struggling. I feel like I'm burning out or this is too much. I feel like I'm so busy and yet I'm getting nothing done. Can you help me? Or what would really help me is if maybe on this day you could take that off my hands and drop the kids there. You know, what, what does that look like for you? And can you do it clearly, respectfully, honestly, um, and being a little bit vulnerable, right? I love how all this stuff, like the stuff is woven in with emotional intelligence. So I hope you're like getting that and that's that's really helpful for you. Seven is something that I talk about a lot. It's identifying and understanding your triggers. So the things that happen, maybe the, the behaviors that your kids have or do that trigger you and flip your lid, knowing what they are. Because the more we're triggered and we're not managing it or doing something to support ourselves, the more we're gonna lead to burnout. So do you know your triggers? A whole module in my signature program, Chaos to Connection, is on triggers. And like, what are your triggers? What are they? When do they come? How do you deal with them? Like, we've got to be really aware and intentional and purposeful with this stuff if we're going to make change in our lives and our family. You've got to be intentional about your triggers, knowing what they are and where they come up. So even just having that awareness is huge. Eight is practicing emotional regulation. Of course, emotional intelligence, a big, big chunk of that is regulating your emotions. So the way I sometimes describe it is once we start to do some more of this stuff, we see those massive spikes of blow ups and emotions change to like speed humps throughout the day, like a wave, more like a wave rather than those tick, 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 tick. So I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but um, practicing emotional regulation is what, how do I regulate and manage my emotions when I sense them coming up. Like this goes back to step one. <laughs> so um, find some techniques to manage strong emotions. Maybe it's deep breathing, maybe it's meditation, maybe it's EFT tapping. That's something I'm doing much more of and I'm getting trained in. EFT tapping is really powerful. Maybe it's just learning to pause and respond, not react buying yourself time using circuit breakers. How can you regulate your emotions? So that's a huge one. It's okay to leave a situation if your child is safe and they're not running down the road. When you're at home, 90% of the time, maybe even more. It's okay and even beneficial to leave the situation. Maybe it's an argument or a blow up, leave the situation. Go and um, flick the kettle on, wait till it boils, and then come back when you're more calm and regulated. <laughs> no shame in that. That's actually a really smart, emotionally intelligent move. Number nine is getting social support. So p support from people around you, right? You've got to do that if you're burning out. You can't do it alone. You're not a silo. Sometimes I know it sounds harsh and I don't like to say it too often, but like no one is coming to save you because they all have their own busy life and problems and, and challenges and stuff. That is not to dismiss what you're going through. And if you're feeling like you're burning out, absolutely not. But my point is you, you know, a big part of this is you going, yeah, I need some help. This is tough, I'm not coping, I'm burning out, I don't care anymore, and I don't wanna be in this place, in this space. So reaching out to people, family, friends, even online, you know, it can be a little bit more um, like depersonalized online, you know, when you meet someone and because you've only just met them, you can be a bit more vulnerable and open, whereas you wouldn't really tell your friend, you know, your friend or your mom or something. So whatever it is, get some social support from people, um, because that is going to help you to get out of that spiral. Last one, modeling emotional intelligence. So of course I'm all about emotional intelligence. Um, I really think if we can start modeling how we are dealing with our own emotions to our kids, then that is doing such a world of good that we can't even fathom the ripple effects that's going to have. A lot of the time we don't show our kids how we're feeling. We manage it, we shove it down, we deal with it 
you know, at night when they've gone to bed and we're like, ah, or we text, you know, angrily and we vent to a friend. We don't let those emotions come up. Let our kids see how we're feeling and model, talk through. I'm really stressed about work, guys. You know, I think I need a cup of tea and a biscuit. I need to just rest. Then I can come and help you with homework. You know, I've had a huge day. I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling a bit anxious about this thing coming up. Like modeling to our kids, talking about emotions, being aware of them, um, coping strategies. How do I feel? What am I going to do about it? And that's normalizing it. And that is modeling emotional intelligence. There's obviously a whole lot more. But when they, when kids see parents coping with emotions in a healthy way, like that's a valuable life lesson, right? You might not see them doing the exact same thing the next day, but man, you are like, you, it's like a, think of a drop of water on a rock. Many, 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 many drops. It creates an impact over time. That's what we're doing. I hope that's been really helpful for you guys. Um, There are so many ways in which you can deal with and just help yourself, support yourself a little bit when you're feeling like you're getting to that burnout point. And if you're already there, please reach out. If you're a parent and you need some support, this is the stuff I love. I have programs on it. I have a book on it. Where is it? The book up here (laughs) from Chaos to Connection. It's on Amazon. You can get it very quickly. Um, And that's worldwide, wherever you are in Amazon. So please, um, there's heaps of stuff in there. There's programs, there's my website. You guys can find all the links below. And then of course I do parenting, parent coaching one-on-one. So if you want that support, reach out. Okay, and share this video if you know someone who has kids and knows it's tough and there are challenges and and you wanna support them, maybe just flick it to them and say, hey, I thought of you. So it might, might make a huge difference to them. Um, All right, guys, have a great day. I will see you next time. Take care.